As you're speaking about this, I feel you're so strong and you've got it all together and you and people watching this probably think, well, Sid never has bad days. You're always, your response is always like this. I'll let it go. I'll always be strong. Is it, tr is that true? All right, I'm gonna stop you for one second, right? Keep this camera rolling. Okay, what are you doing? I wanna show you something. Okay. Is this on the podcast? Yeah, this is on the podcast. Okay. This is on. Okay. All right, I'm back. <laughs> what you just said about I always have it together, mm -hmm. right? And that I'm always so put to bed together. That is anxiety medication that I take three times a day on top of Prozac that I take for my OCD. This one I meant to take at lunchtime. If I had a bottle of water, I take it right now on camera. I'm not ashamed by it, right? So when you say I've got it all together, Sure, I might have it all together, but the person who looks like he's got it all together is on anti-anxiety medication, mm -hmm. antidepressants, and I'm completely okay with it. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and because it's important. It's important. Don't talk about it. Why do you feel comfortable now to talk about it? We need to change as a society to become more accepting. Yeah. Right? And the only way we're going to do that is to get people comfortable around the conversation. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can get people comfortable around it is to talk about it. And you know what, again, like right now, people might be like, oh, anxiety medication, like, like, so what? If one person watches this and they're like, oh, cool, I, like, I take that as well. Yeah. Thank you for him uh, sharing it. Mm -hmm. Then you've helped someone. And then that person's gonna feel more open and yes. could go and help someone else. And suddenly now it's a knock on effect. For sure. And also if someone's listening to this and thinking, I'm so afraid of taking it because it's gonna change who I am and become, I'm gonna become addicted. Talk to me about your process of, of taking that. Because I remember you did say to me, your mom was very upset when she saw yeah, that. Yeah, well, so in 2016, mm -hmm. they gave me um, 5MG of Ciprolex was the brand. Okay. Five milligrams of Ciprolex, which was an antidepressant. Nothing, 5MG is nothing. Okay. Um, they were like, you know, the doctor was like, this make you feel better. But after like a month or so, I was like, I don't really like this. Okay. Stopped it. Then last year when I was writing the book, right? I have clinical OCD. Mm -hmm. And I was obviously writing about my OCD in the book, which was yes. bringing up a lot. So my therapist was like, speak to a psychiatrist. And they gave me Prozac, which again is another type of antidepressant. So you've got Ciprolex, Prozac, Fluoxetine. Okay. So Fluoxetine is the... Um, general name for Prozac and um, you know there, there's different types but all do the same kind of thing and different things work for different people I was on 20 mg then we went up to 46 I think I'm on 60 mg of it today okay not because I'm depressed but it's because it helps with the OCD so antidepressant medicine mm -hmm. and OCD medicine it helps the same thing mm -hmm. I have no problem taking it and you know for those of you who know me watching this, know that my dad's going through some stuff right now. It's mm -hmm. been a pretty difficult last three months. Um, I've had various people in my life pass away and mm -hmm. it's been a lot of stress. So that's why the psychiatrist said, give me this and said, take this for a bit. It might help. Mm -hmm. um, the name will come to me of what this is. Um, but I forget. If okay. it comes to me, I'll tell you. And I, and I take it because I'm like, it makes me feel better. Right? And... You take your vitamins in the morning, right? If you've got a headache, you're not questioning popping a Nurofen, mm -hmm. right? So why would I question taking these meds if they're actually doing their job to help me feel better? I think some people- And are, helping me. I think some people are very hesitant to take um, anti-anxiety medication or medication surrounding depression because they think they're going to become addicted on it. And I remember speaking to my friend about this and she said- in those moments, you feel like you cannot get out. And if that medication helps you feel that you can, she was like, I came off it after three months because then I felt ready to come off it. But you it's, know, It doesn't have to be that you, you take it forever and people have this fear of it. It doesn't have to be that you take it forever. It also doesn't not have to be that you take it forever. I, I spoke to that. my therapist about this. I was like, this works for me. Should we think about moving on? She's like, listen, there's no harm. You can take this for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm concerned right now, I'll keep taking these pills for the rest of my life. Now, I do want to say, because I know we're going to have people who say this, who watch this, oh, well, not everyone's got access to antidepressants. It's expensive, la, la, la. True, okay? And I, and I understand that people don't sometimes perhaps have the same access as we do to healthcare and, and stuff like that. So there are a lot of other ways, meditation, yoga, I talk about this all in the book. There are mm -hmm. other ways you can help yourself if you're either hesitant to go on antidepressants or if you, if you don't have access to them. Yeah. But 